Hello, this is the Land Use Subcommittee of the Amherst Conservation Commission. It is uh, 12 12 on Tuesday, the 20th. And we have present myself, Alex Hoare, and Commissioner Bruce Stedman, and Aaron Schock, Wetland Coordinator. And today we're going to, we have an agenda which has been published, and it says we're going to talk about dogs. And I would also like to add that we're probably going to talk about uh, comments we've received on the agricultural policy. So with that, um, I'll just open it up and uh, uh, start with the ag policy, if we could. Yes, Bruce. Um, my my version of the agenda includes hunting. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot um, about that. And I I went looking for the document and couldn't find it, so I'm assuming that's moving on to the next one. Yeah, I, I did get comments from Rachel on the ag policy, which you were kind enough to uh, incorporate her editorial changes. And then we have a bunch of questions and suggestions that she listed, and I'm hoping we can quickly go through them. Okay. That, you know, do we like this sentence? Um, yeah. Kind of a thing. So if you could uh, bring that up on the screen and just we'll hopefully quickly go through her suggestions and recommendations and say yeah or no. And then we need to talk about what we do with that ag policy now that we've gotten some comments and then quickly go back to the dog discussion. In your email, I just sent you a revised dog policy such as is in the document. And um, I just made some editorial comments on it. Um, and then I sent you last night an Excel spreadsheet where I scored uh, mm -hmm. the action items, and I can explain that. And okay. I did regroup uh, ranked. I gave you a ranked list, which might be a little confusing, and we need to talk about where we're headed. What do we want our final product to look like? So okay. uh, I want to reserve 40 minutes uh, or 30, it'll be about 35 minutes now for dogs. Okay. So, Bruce, if you can lead us through the ag policy and what we need to address. Okay. Can you see the sharing? Yes. And so, so in, ter in terms of participation, I would just assume not, there's just three of us. I just assume not have to raise hands, just people. Okay. Go. Uh, number six on page three is highlighted so we remember about um, dealing with uh, Appendix A. Um, I did send a draft of it, but I've never seen it come back with any uh, comments. So we we'll need to try again on that. Remind uh, me what that appendix item is. Is that the? Uh, it's the ranking. Yes. The idea of having a ranking table. I did make a comment on that saying, okay. let's leave it alone and let people in the future tinker with it if they have to use it. Okay. Well, that's fine with me. <clears throat> um, so as far as, page, as far as the yellow highlight, if you're happy. I just put it, I just put it there to remind us to, uh, to make sure we get the appendix A attached to the thing when we send it out. Oh, then I'll fine. take it's not currently. No, it's just it's just listed as an appendix. It's not attached. Okay, so as an action item, why don't you attach it as a result of this meeting? I will. And we'll just let the people in the future adjust it as they see fit, but not have us do any more work. I think you did a great job. Okay. Can I ask um, a quick organizational question before we move on, which is the appendix. I'm assuming that once we get the entire land use policy assembled with the various sections, that there's going to be an appendix at the end of that document, or are we going to have it sort of chapter by chapter with appendices attached? For now, just for ease of uh, putting things together, why don't we append to the policy, to so append to the ag policy, Okay. and then go consider the larger question later. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, bottom of page three, section E, involvement of abutters. So what's written there is what Rachel Leffler put in. Um, it just originally it said abutters will be notified. And her question is, well, within what distance? I didn't quite understand the 300 feet. And I tried to imagine when that would be applicable. Um, and I, I thought, well, maybe an ag activity doesn't go right to the boundary of some lot. Maybe it's not easy to identify where the boundaries of the lot of the ag activity is. And maybe that's what she was trying to do. So the the um, current abutters list for planning, conservation, and various other boards and committees are within 300 feet of the property line. So it might have been a you know, hearkening back to our bylaw, which requires that. Because if wherever, for example, um, we have a an NOI where we're going to be creating a new lot in a sensitive area, um, abutters would be notified within 300 feet as per any conservation application. Um, so it's kind of like an established norm in terms of an offset from a, from an abutter um, from an, a, a parcel boundary, I guess. So if that's the case, why don't we say okay and get rid of her question? All right, I can do that. Next, the next question is, whoops, sorry. Here we go. Um, the next question is, who sends the notifications? Aaron? Yeah, so um, any any applicant who comes before CONCOM sends out their own notifications. When we receive an application, we would work with the assessor's office to get them their certified abutters list. But from there, it becomes their obligation to notify abutters um, per the regs. Okay. And just um, an editorial thing on that previous um on that previous one. Yeah. Can you go back? I've, yeah, go on up. Yeah. Um, um, oh, you have an apostrophe for feet. What is our standard in this thing? Are we using an apostrophe or are we saying FT period or feet? I'll just write it out so it's clear. There we go. Sorry to be picky. No, better to catch them now. Okay, so then down here, um, Rachel added the part in gray. Are you okay with it? Um, uh, hold on. I like, I like this. Um, I have that's... a, go ahead. Well, when I worked at USDA, it was like a standard cover crops be required. I have a problem with using the word may. If the word may is used, we might all not we might as well not have the sentence there. It should either be must or shall. I'm good with shall. Because all, do... all it says is consider. We could also say are encouraged to. Um, I that's agree with you. That's yeah. the same as May. Well, so if they're, depending on where we have um, the project, there may not be an area for them to put pollinator word, support. Yeah, but the operative word is consider. Right. They could just say there's no place for oh, me to do it. I, gotcha. You know, okay. not, not applicable or something. Fair enough. All right. So what you, you said shall. Yes, shall consider. Okay. All right. Uh, come on. Why is my? I mean, here we go. Yes, yeah, so you can get rid of your comment. Here we go. Uh, page five, um, section N. Same thing. She added the part in gray.
why is it the app if there's a license issued why are we talking about an applicant it's the licensee isn't it so i think what she's saying here is that um that if the town grants a given entity um permission to farm the land that it doesn't mean they all of a sudden have an uh, an exemption under the wetlands protection I got act that. And i got that but the license has been issued in no way shall a license allow at that point we don't have an applicant we have a licensee so it's a, it's like this is a reminder to the the application reviewers more than to the applicants Yeah. So I, I would just, we got um, an applicant can't do anything officially anyway. So we're really talking about the licensee. I would just strike applicant. To... Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Let's, let me strike it and see how it reads then. And Aaron, remind me what. 310 CMR 1004 is. That's the regulatory reference for the agricultural exemptions in the Wetlands Protection Act. So if it's prior um, prior agriculture, wetlands protections don't apply. Um, that's not entirely true. There are certain exemptions. Oh, yeah, never mind. Don't have to explain it. Yeah. That's yeah. good enough. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good to go. Yeah, get rid of the comment. Uh, so those things in brackets, Rachel put in there as questions. Yeah, when I read this, um, we have a fencing. We somewhere we have something about um, we have a thing about wildlife damage, and what we said that. We address wildlife, and um, so I don't, as far as it says, do we want to let wildlife forage in there, I don't want to even think about it, because wildlife is addressed someplace else in this policy. So I'm, gonna we, see if, I'm just going to see if I can find it. But... Um, here, so there's the, you said, well, we have another one, and yes, it's down below on page six, number X. Yeah, so those two need to be combined. Um, I actually think she put the whole thing in there because the, 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 the whole way of writing it is different than the way I had mine. Well... We allow fencing to manage livestock. I don't know about protection of crop production. A deer can jump a lot. So down here it says, doesn't really say what the fencing is for, but it does say it requires wildlife friendly smooth. Fencing that does not cause entanglement. Why, why do we have fencing twice? If one is land management. What's what's our on the re I believe the reason is that she put it all in there. It wasn't in there before. I'd have to go back and check. But anyway, they do need to be combined. And it could be that her addition gets deleted. So just I just want to point one thing out, and I don't know if this is essential for consistency or not, but the community gardens do have fencing around them. Like for example, the community gardens at Fort River Farm have fencing and they also have a um, an attachment to the top of the existing fencing for deer protection. So just in terms of consistency, I don't know if that's something the board wants to consider or if we're just gonna keep them completely separate here. I'd keep it separate. I'd keep, I, I, that fence was, bought by a, under a grant and it was arranged with the people who who managed the I don't think the town I don't know I've forgotten what Dave told me but I would uh, Alec, here's my suggestion that I take this section R I, I add it take her questions out 
put something in there with a, a highlight on down below and let people react to it. Yeah, I'd like to move this as close to a final draft as possible and not put well, any questions. Okay, then when we need to decide what to do with this. Why don't you move R to the other fencing section and merge them together so that uh, we're not adding anything. That, that was my suggestion. As it says may permit temporary fencing. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the second fencing is kind of extraneous to me. Like, I feel like W kind of covers it. Like, if the commission reviews it on a given site and doesn't want it there, they can say no. Um, if they review it and they think it's acceptable, they could yeah. allow it. Sure, and we don't need to specify what it's for. There may be other things besides those two things that fencing would be for. So yeah. let's just eliminate what you put in there and move on. Get rid of the comments. She's got biosolids. We, we're going to need to go back up and make sure we... Yeah. Well, I'll go there. Okay, right. She added bio, this thing about biosolids. Yeah, I'm not able to read all of the lettering. It's, yeah. It says, if biosolids are used as an amendment strategy, it must be tested and confirmed to be PFAS free. Just PFAS? Well, that's a question. Free of PFAS and other contaminants. Yeah, I like that. No parentheses. Free of, confirmed to be free of PFAS and other contaminants. And is PFAS spelled out somewhere? Uh, I can put it in the uh, in the glossary. Okay. So one thought here too, just as long as we're trying to be comprehensive, sometimes soils will include little bits of. Um, non-biodegradable, like, uh, um, I don't know what you call it, it's like um, the little plastic pieces. I don't know if that's what she's getting at, but um, if we want to include shall be contaminant free and and biodegradable or something like that, or 100% biodegradable. I don't know. It's too, it's too complicated. There are going to be small little things no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Uh, Sorry to try to push us, but uh, oh, I'm pushing. I, I I'm trying to get there. That's, that's okay. it. Okay, so um, we, got, we got one more comment down here. Right, and that is the question of whether to include as an appendix the state listed endangered and invasive species list, or just refer to it with a link. Um, what do you think, Aaron? I think a link would be more up to date. These lists change on an annual basis. And I think Good. it, yeah. Good. That's enough. I'll find the link and fix this before I send it out again. I okay. have a link if you need it. I have a link yeah, to just, explore. Okay. Send it to me, please. Okay. And I think that's it. Um, so we are. We are past the comment date for commissioners. I think Rachel's the only one who submitted comments. Hers were good. Yeah, yeah um, I think we should send this to the whole group. Well, that was my next question. Whether to send this piece to the whole group as a final draft, we're not going to ask for additional comments, or do we hold on to it and put it in a special folder as completed? Maybe the, we... the... Go ahead. The latter, I would say. I agree. The latter. Good. Uh, I will good. work on. Sorry, I before I send it back to you, I will work on getting some definitions here for the glossary and get them from the, the extension service. Let's move. 
to the other topics. Okay, so this is going to Aaron for, you're gonna send us both a, and Michelle a copy and Aaron's gonna be the keeper of the final draft. There we go. Okay. The, the magic hidden folder. Yep. And if you could just put final draft in the subject I, yeah, line, that'd be great. I will. Thank you. All right, I'm I'm out of there. Yeah, do me a favor and still keep the number of the draft. I think it was Oh no. This will be 18. 18 <laughs> final. <laughs> final final draft. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. So dogs. That. Can you bring up um the email that I sent you which is the dog regs themselves and we'll quickly go through that? Because the rest of it's going to be, where are we going? Who's the you, me or Aaron? Um, I'll, I'll ask Aaron to bring it up. Whoever gets to it first. So this one. is the one you just marked up, um, Alex? Yeah. I, uh, what I did was I tried to be, I tried to economize on words. And I called the police department and, you know, tried to just check what we've got. So um, if we could just, this is just short document. It's like um, three quarters of a page, double spaced. And there aren't a whole lot of changes except I, I eliminated some words. Um, there are words eliminated other than those that have strike through. I don't think I changed the meaning of anything. So we could just go bullet by bullet. I'm just trying to read them quickly. Okay, I'm I'm good with all of them. I have to do one question. Oh, you're done. With, you're fine with all bullets. Yeah. Okay. I mean. There, there are the three questions that you raise, and I have a question. Yeah, well, I those questions have always been there. I didn't get rid of them. Well, I think it's still the the professional dog walking is still relevant. Oh, it's not in here. Yeah, it's up there. Comment at the top. Bruce Stedman, number one. How do we handle dog walking? Michelle notes that the, a limit on the number of dogs might work. Yes. Yeah, we need to add that. I'm sorry, Bruce, I didn't see your comment up there when I worked on it. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I, and so the, the question is how many? <laughs> okay, well, so whatever we do, let's make it bullet number one. Okay. Um, can we just say professional dog walker? If somebody yeah. paid, and rather than, I mean, if... The, the, the dog logs of Massachusetts say you can only have X number of dogs. You can only own X number of dogs without getting a kennel license. I don't Yeah, but the dog walker doesn't them. own them. They just go get them and somebody pays them to walk them around. Yeah, so I sent out a summary of Massachusetts dog laws and my wife's mowing the lawn. I'm gonna get up and change, close the window. I'm wondering if we should cap it at the number that are required for a kennel license. It's so in the dog summary, the dog law summary that I sent out, and I don't want to take the time to look it up, but I don't want to get into number of dogs. I would rather say the word professional is probably not good, but if somebody's being paid to walk dogs, they can't do it on conservation land. Yeah, I mean, can maybe or you... cannot. Cannot. Well, let's just say that. Um, yeah, I was going to say like commercial um, dog operations are not allowed. I did see um, somebody at Mill River. I know it's not Concom land, but doing a dog training with somebody at at Mill River, which was interesting. So it would say commercial dog walking is not allowed. Yeah, and somehow you've got to put parentheses to find commercial, somebody being paid. 
and let's let's not try and tinker with it too much because um okay so i mean just another thought here people are using town lands to um do dog training that's workshops. training we're talking people. about dog walkers right now aaron right okay well when that's appropriate to bring up let me know so if we could add a bullet number one uh before we discuss leashes and just add uh i can i, I don't know if i have control i don't have control uh, sorry what are we we're, we're adding a bullet of above Right. It says commercial dog walking is not allowed. Bullet number one. There we go. And, um, do we have to define commercial, or what happens if if Johnny mows somebody's lawn? rakes their leaves, yeah. walks their dogs, and gets paid for all three. He's not commercial. Just call it paid dog, dog walking. You could say um, commercial dog walkers or anybody being paid to walk dogs are not allowed on conservation land. Anyone paid to walk dogs? Oh my gosh. Are not allowed. Does that cover it? Well, for now. Okay. We'll see how it reads in the in the bright of day. Do you have so you can get rid of your comment? Aaron, did you want to say something? Um, about what dog walkers? Maybe to say not allowed to use conservation lands. Right. Not allowed on. What's the difference? Okay, I don't care. Or utilize? I don't know. Okay, not allowed to, not allowed to use conservation lands for that purpose. Yeah. If there we go. Yeah, or for business purpose, yeah. For that purpose. Okay. Okay, I'm done with that as far as I'm concerned. Um, can we handle the leashes first and then get to training? Because some training is talked about in here, and I tried to get uh, training as a separate bullet. Any problems with the second bullet? No, it read well to me. I just tried to simplify. And I will say here that we're going to visit um, a place down there towards Amherst Woods on Monday where Michelle has had an issue. And I'm going, I'm just telling you now, I'm going to propose that the solution there may be to add that area to Lower Mill River and Amethyst Brook and allow off leash activity between the same hours and give something to the dog walkers but limit them past 10 o'clock and um, otherwise we got a horrible enforcement issue and um, Amherst has trouble enforcing things so I'm I don't know how Aunt Michelle will th think about that but that seems to me to be a common sense solution is to give a little but limit a lot Um, um, I, and we've had that sentence in there, if they're not sufficiently well-trained, um, they shouldn't be there. They got to, they, the, the dog must remain on a leash. And I was going to add something about this. This is a reportable offense, but I didn't get there. I didn't do it. Um, 
we could add something to this second bullet saying see enforcement below but it's it's right there so then this is your issue um uh, aaron off-leash dog training um i don't have a problem with people training dogs at lower mill river i did it myself yeah i'm not talking about dog training per se i'm just thinking we should consider whether we allow commercial dog training what does commercial mean well Com it's somebody who's who's light who's who's saying this is my business i'm training dogs bring your dogs and pay me we'll go to mill river and i'll work with you to train your dog on public land you know just like commercial dog walking i'm just saying like if you're not allowing commercial dog walking i think we should consider whether we allow commercial dog training on town lands so is this and maybe somebody, the commission's okay with it is this somebody training a labrador retriever for hunting or is this somebody holding a class uh for people to learn dog handling skills generally like what are they calling no. yeah well i think it could be either i'm just talking like you know i think any kind of commercial activity and this is something like with the the land use application where we're trying to sort of capture and monitor and and regulate commercial uses of conservation land um i don't i don't also have a problem with people using mill river i'm just uh, and mill river is a rec area so i'm you know i'm just using it as an example okay. that we should Let's, I understand, um, whoever has control, let's put in a second bullet on commercial, another commercial uh, use right at the top and add a, a bullet, yeah, commercial, um, commercial, I'm confused on what commercial dog training is. Um, it's somebody being paid by another person to train their dog. Um, yeah right i i got that but if this is like you know people give their horses to trainers and they keep them for six months and they come back trained and you know can spin on their hind foot and all that kind of stuff versus you know dog training classes commercial dog training classes okay are not allowed we just take the not allowed language and move it down or maybe we want to consider allowing them, but by land use permit application process only. I don't. Something. I mean, no. I want to keep it simple. On conservation oh. land. Period. Good. <clears throat> okay, and somewhere, somewhere in our policies, we probably have a commercial use policy and uh i for consistency i would try and put a note here that we need to um check the rest of the document for the commercial use and make sure that uh what we just wrote is referenced Moving on, I got 1248, I got 1245, excuse me. Uh, so off-leash training, are we done with that? Uh, I was fine with the bullet. And with your idea of discussing it when we go to Wentworth. When we go to what? Isn't it called Wentworth Conservation Area? So we're going Monday morning? Yeah. That's a big area. Uh, uh, I believe that uh, Michelle's going to lead us around to the relevant spots. Yeah. So we can... We can okay. 
And then we're, so we're done with off leash and dogs are not permitted. Da, 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 da. And I, I did do some work here. So Alex, it doesn't feel as it's, you work on the anti-dog. Um, I didn't change my comments. No, I'm just saying you, it feels like you worked on that and it's better. And so, and the other one, the hunting is a different copy in a, on a different sheet. Yeah, so we can get through, we can get rid of the anti-dog comment. I'm sorry, where's anti-dog? There are two that you're, you're right there. Just get rid of the comment. To the right. No, there, get rid of those. This here? Oh, don't get rid of the hunting one. That's not resolved yet. Sorry. Oh, 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 I see. Let's talk about why do we see. Just to... need to eliminate the comment. It's been addressed. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was confused on that one. Um, so, can I just make a comment about hunting, just so that we can, so for your ears, um, I have a more of a problem with firearms than I do bow and arrow. Um, projectiles carry and it's not always possible to know that you have a safe background and when I teach hunter safety having a safe background that you're shooting at is is a safety concern if somebody is deer hunting with a with a black powder rifle that's a 50 caliber slug um, and can go through twigs and bushes there's 80 miles of trails. We've never had a person hurt, but I don't want to. And uh, if I was to eliminate some portion of hunting, it would be firearms and not say anything, not disallow bow, bow hunting. Um, so my question was, um, yes, we, we should discuss hunting on conservation land, this place where hunting is referred to is in a section about dogs. And there presumably is another place in this whole big document where hunting should be discussed. Let's get rid of my comment then. Okay, that's Let's all I meant. Clean this up. We can get rid of my comment here, but that's my my current thinking. And, and okay. as a, as a sidebar to, oh. Bruce and I have talked about that. And between our conversations, he was in agreement with me that there's a potential safety hazard with so many trails. Yeah. So that's that's all. That's we can okay. move on. get rid of my comment. Whoever has control. But Aaron, what were you going to say? Um, when we talked, sorry, when we talked about hunting last time, I updated the maps, the hunting maps. So when we're ready to talk about hunting again, I have those maps ready. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so we're now on dogs are not allowed in the water. I all I did was get rid of some language and put Ori on the beaches. I'm I'm good with what's there. It's the same thing. Okay. Um so Aaron, give me some feedback. Why are dogs not allowed in Puffer's Pond? On dog beach. Um, So I I wasn't here when that was decision was made. Um, I think just having been a resident of Amherst for a long time, my observation was that there was a lot of dogs running around those areas and also going to the bathroom around those areas while people were using the pond. And I think it became uh, sort of a, a hazard to people and um, also like a concern about dog waste around the beaches as well. Um, but I. You know, I'm sure Dave Z could talk more about when that oh, decision I, was made. I used the term dog beach and <laughs> David came unglued. He was said, I've been trying to get rid of that term. But yeah, I swam my dogs at dog beach many, many, many times. It was a great place to go up there with my retrievers and dummies, throw them into the water and have them retrieve. And 
as far as I'm concerned, the, I mean, it's a big pond and the water, the water cycles through there. I never noticed a lot of dog waste around Dog Beach at all. And I understand why dogs are not allowed on the other beach. That I understand. But Dog Beach is a long ways from the swimming beach. And still, there are a lot of people who come up there and park next to Dog Beach, what I, what I will call Dog Beach. And um, um, I never had anybody concerned about swimming there. And people swim from the one beach to the other and then swim back. It's a big pond. And the water comes in and goes out and water gets exchanged. I don't, it's not, I, I think well, that... I think Eric, Alex, this is valuable information, but I don't think Aaron's the decision maker here. Yeah. It sounds like just, Dave is the one we need to, you need to talk to some more if you want to solve it. I, I am, you're absolutely correct. I thought maybe Aaron could provide me some background. Maybe. The, okay. okay. I do know that there's a small um, sort of ponded swimming area upstream of um, Puffers, which is on, on the Cushman Brook, which I believe is open for, you know, dogs to swim at. And, and that's the area I always knew is quote unquote dog beach. Um, I never knew Puffer's Pond proper to have a dog beach. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, and you know. Dog beach is the, the other beach at Puffer's Pond and the area you're talking about is below the bridge. Yes. Yep. Yep. I've swum my dogs there. I've swum there. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. Uh, dogs not permitted to seek. Any problems there? No. Dogs not allowed in the water. Any problems there? No. Dog handlers must bag and pick up. No problem there? Oh, no problem. Definitely good. And then uh, I want to come back to this in terms of because uh, uh, it goes on to one of our actions. But and then there's the business about the animal control officer. Um, I did call a police department and ask, what is, what's the communication center? Do I need those words? And I was informed that the woman who answers the phone at 259-3000 answers for the police department, the fire department, and one other. So I didn't change the language. Okay. So with your permission, I would like to incorporate all changes and say that this draft is ready to go to the commission for its review and comment. So since Aaron put the version up and added pieces, we should just, Aaron, it seems like the most efficient thing is for her to use the track changes to agree to everything that's in there now and call it good. Yep. Yeah, and I can add, would it make sense for me to add this to the upcoming agenda as just a quick bullet under land use updates to say yeah. in your packet is the dog rules and, you know, have a yeah. look at them? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we may be, we may be, um, piecemealing what we give them. We'll have to talk about that in the remaining time if I can. I'm pretty sure we agreed to do it that way because as the note taker, I remember distinctly typing that into the notes. And we said that we were going to send them in pieces as we had them ready. Um, I, I do think that it might be good for us to proactively determine a date, um, Alex, just to tell them we'd like comments back by a certain date. Um, that way, when we give it to them, they're prepared to get back to us. Yeah, um, lots of time. If we give them lots of time, it tends to get well, forgotten. So how about it's a only, yeah, a week because it's only one page. Um, so a week from the 28th. So that would be um, September 4th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So in the time, um, if we go over a couple of minutes, would that be okay, Aaron? It's fine with me. Bruce? Okay. So if we could bring up um, the two things I mailed out last 
last night. One is the Excel spreadsheet and the other is the ranked action items. And I don't want to necessarily go through each item because Bruce, you reviewed it. You, you marked them high, medium, and low. Aaron, you didn't give me any comments. What I'd like to focus on in the remaining time is where are we headed? What products do we need? We have the rules, but, and I'll just say, it seems like we needed a standalone document uh, if we're gonna work with other departments or, um, I, I don't know beyond what we just worked on, what products do we need? But were there other sections of the big overarching document that we haven't looked at for a really long time or weren't done? Well, so there's I'm a standard. About, I'm talking about dogs. Oh, dogs. Okay. All right. Well, let's stick with dogs then. Yeah. So with, with, with regard to dogs, we have the rules that we just. Right. Right. We have, we have some language that I wrote about this and that and the other thing. And then we have these action items that we spent quite a bit of time on. Um, Aaron, are you putting them up or mine? The two documents that he sent us today. Should I go uh, find them? Well, I, I have them up. I've, I'm not seeing them shared. Yeah, I was waiting to share them while we were talking, but I can mm -hmm. share them. I just like looking at people's faces when we're talking, but I'll put them up. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, I, 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 we're up at the top. It does need to be bigger, though. So I don't want to spend uh, time on how these are arranged or what the original number was or what the score was. You can look at the Excel spreadsheet or we can cover that second. First of all, I'd like to talk about what do we do with this? Um, these well, are... These are administrative type things that Dave and his staff would implement. They're yeah. not necessarily policy, which is our job. Uh, but do we want to, so I'll just throw it out there. Do we want to take this document in front of you and dress it up uh, as something that the commission is providing to Dave Zomack and town employees as things to do to better the dog situation. Yeah, I, I'd say we offer this as a set of administrative tasks that we think would help implement the rules that we have already agreed to. And it's like an appendix. <laughs> and so, and you just say, rest of the commissioners, you got anything else to add to this? Because we're making a recommendation as the subcommittee. Okay. So you just said in an appendix, um, maybe we could append it to the dog. Or an addendum or something. Yeah. Maybe Attachment. Append it to the dog rules that we just finished, like we appended something to the egg policy. And I could take the document that's in front of you. And um, um, I've already got the scores in there. Um, 11 and 12 didn't come out very high. And I think anything really below four isn't going to go anywhere. Well, I had a thought about that. I think as the introductory sentences to the, the town staff, one could say, this is our best guess of what the order of priority for doing given time and money available. And should that be a memo? What, what form should it take? So um, one idea is, yeah, make it a memo with recommendations. And we could, I like the idea of having it as an appendix in the land use policy. But I also like, um, this is going to, these recommendations can also be directly integrated into our open space and recreation plan. That's going to be like a seven-year plan for the town. So we can integrate them in there. Um, and that way they're sort of memorialized in two different official ways. I guess I was thinking of the resources available given that, what was it, two years ago, the seasonal, I think Dave said he had five seasonal staff and this year he had two. And so the capacity to do these things comes and goes. 
Yep. But what what Dave's wanting from us are things he can point to um, to do. So well, that's, and that's what this is. That's what exactly what this is. And yeah. the first item is integrate into the open space plan. Yeah. If you looked at Dave, what I didn't, nobody saw what Dave gave me or what Bruce gave me or what Michelle gave me. But what, what Dave did is he regrouped everything into the things that he thought as a package was very doable. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then he had a pack, he had a section of we're already doing this. I think we should continue. So when you see the word continue, that uh, when something was a continuance, I gave it a score of nine. So the scores, if you look, mm -hmm. at, was nine, six, <clears throat> two. Yeah. I, I picked those scores so I would get a spread I, um, for ranking purposes. Anyways, so every <laughs> it was really difficult to get to what you is in front of you because everybody came at this ranking differently, including Michelle, who eliminated some, combined them, and rewrote them. <laughs> well, I think this feels to me, looking at it as a good exercise, it gives a lot of things the town can do. And we're a policy commission and we should try to stick to it. And we've done this work, we should hand it over. Okay, so in terms of the product, maybe um, I'm happy to to take this. Um, I'm happy to take this product and turn it into whatever we think it should look like. If it should be a memo from the commission to Dave Zomack, uh, I I can take this and create that memo, and I, I, can, I think, and just I, let the commissioners read it before we send it to him. Just in case somebody comes up with something. I'll, I'll mark it draft, but I don't want to send them what's in front of you. There's too much explaining to do. And no, so I, I, would, I would keep the rank order. I'd get rid of the original number. The agreed. And, and I would prepare a memo and I'd send it to Aaron to be uh, given to the commission with the... Right rules that we just finished so they get two items the rules and the memo yeah we could, you could just say this is really good ideas that came out of our work you have something to comment do but we're set, we're proposing to send this to dave and the staff for their use yeah that would be what i would say during the meeting but i'm not going to say that in the memo okay the memo is going to be from the commission Okay. Hi, buddy. You feeling better? He can't about, hear you because I've got my headset on. <laughs> we're about done. Okay, so if you are in agreement, um, that's what I'll do. I'll create a memo okay. with these items in it. They don't need to see the Excel spreadsheet. They don't need to see the original right. list. Agreed. I'm in agreement. Got it. That's all I really wanted out of this. Okay. Any anything else, Aaron? You got pictures? Uh there was this. Oh, is this just the scoring? Oh, I see. Got it. Okay. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to look at this yet. Yeah, okay. that's how I. That's how I scored things, and it's. Gotcha. Very good. So I what like you've that. got, what you've got on the left, is the rank order. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Nice. Very nice. <clears throat> but that's not going to the commission. Right. 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 Got it. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Everybody's saying hi. Hi. <laughs> you remember me from this morning? <laughs> that's Bruce that you met this morning. <laughs> um, can you tell me in 25 words or less what happened at Greenleaf? I'm going to sign off if you're doing that. I was there. Aaron, did you? Make yes, it? yes, I did. Um, so what they they had been previously approved in that project with a notice of intent to 
um, trench, a water line that ran um, parallel there. to the sewer line. Yeah. Um, the DPW determined that the sewer line is in really bad condition and they're concerned about trenching so close to it that it was going to damage the sewer line. So Greenleaves came up with a, an alternative, which is to do directional drilling going 14 feet, I believe it's down below the wetland with a closed circuit pipe um, that basically can connect the water line without disrupting the sewer line. So it's a, a zero impact solution, which I'm in favor of. Um, as opposed to the trench, which can be that's quite about a bit all of... I, that's yeah. about all I need to know. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Feel You're better, welcome. buddy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you will. It's getting bye there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.